Many people would say it starts here, westbound, on Highway 637, a hilly, winding, two-lane country road. This highway, not built until 1962, is a road that for most of us leads to only one place, Killarney. The story of Killarney Provincial Park doesn't start on this highway. It began well over 50 years ago. It started here at a place that was called Trout Lake. And it wasn't engineers or planners or business people either. It began with a couple of Canadian landscape painters. You may know their names, Franklin Carmichael and A.Y. Jackson. They belonged to a society of artists that we now know as the Group of Seven and they were regular visitors to the forested wilderness area on the northern tip of Georgian Bay. In the 1920s and 30s, Carmichael and Jackson painted at places like Nellie Lake and Grace Lake. They created iconic paintings in a unique style that has come to represent our Canadian landscape at home and internationally. And in 1932, Carmichael and Jackson feared that this majestic landscape was in danger of being lost forever. You see, they knew the devastating effect that logging and mining can have on the environment. And that year, they learned that Trout Lake was about to be logged. So A.Y. Jackson, uh, while in Toronto, um, was spreading the word and trying to figure out how he could have uh, Killarney Provincial Park protected. So one of his good friends came to see him and explained that there was going to be a convention of naturalist clubs um, from all across the country meeting in Toronto that very winter. Now, Mr. Jackson, being the shy person that he was, stated to his friend that he would be unable to attend and address such a large group because he was too shy. So his friend had him write him a letter and the letter was read at the convention. By stroke of luck, the Honorable William Finlayson Minister of Ontario Lands and Forest, was attending that convention. Finlayson was deeply moved by Jackson's impassionate letter. He froze all logging in the area. Trout Lake was also given in trust to the Ontario Society of Artists, and the name was changed. It is now called Ontario Society of Artists Lake, or more commonly, OSA Lake. Over the next 30 years, through continued lobbying by Jackson and Carmichael and fellow Group of Seven painters Arthur Lismer and A.J. Casson, Clarny was designated a wilderness area in 1959. And then, in 1964, it became a provincial park. 2014 marked the 50th anniversary of the official opening of Killarney Provincial Park. Perhaps Killarney's most striking characteristic is the La Cloche Mountain Range. The La Cloche Mountains are a series of ridges with white quartzite tips that dominate the park landscape. Formed from sediment of ancient quartz-rich sand and deposited by rivers and then compressed over time, two billion years ago, these mountains soared as high as the Canadian Rockies. Imagine. The peaks we see today were once the valleys of this magnificent mountain range. And if you choose to climb to the highest point in Killarney Provincial Park, that would be Silver Peak. At 539 meters, it towers over David, Bell, Boundary, Clear Silver, and Johnny Lakes well below. Though the visually predominant rock in Killarney is the stunning white quartzite, it is contrasted against pink granite and red gneiss. Together they form the classic Canadian landscape that so many of us have come to love. It's this combination of merging colors that has inspired artists and explorers for years. This area is Canada's bedrock, known as the Canadian Shield and the stunning Georgian Bay coastline. Pink and white is framed by the bluest waters and by forests that remain a vibrant green in any season, breathtaking for all who visit the area. 
Killarney Provincial Park borders the lands of Point Grandine, Wikwemakon, Whitefish River, and Whitefish Lake First Nations. Aboriginal peoples continue to live and work in this area. The names of Killarney rivers, lakes, and bays, such as Kakakis, Mazanazing, Winokaching, and Chikanishing, are testimonies to the living heritage of this area. First Nations people provided much of the knowledge that allowed others to enter and prosper in this area. As superintendent of Killarney Provincial Park, Jeremy Pawson is keenly aware of how critical it is to maintain the balance between preservation and recreation. Just five hours from Toronto, Killarney is the closest park with a wilderness classification rating. Today, thousands of people a year visit Killarney Provincial Park. It's located on the north coast of Georgian Bay in the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Forest region of Ontario, where the southern deciduous Carolinian forest gives way to the evergreen boreal forest of the north. It's on Killarney's extensive hiking trails that most visitors experience this unique and diverse ecosystem. The La Cloche Silhouette Trail alone is a 78 kilometer loop that can take seven to 10 days to hike. And Killarney's six individual day trails vary in difficulty, ideal for both family outings and the most serious backpacker. We are currently on a hike up to a landmark known as the Crack and we are crossing uh, a footbridge uh, which um, crosses the mouth of Kakakis Lake. This footbridge was uh, put in and constructed by Friends of Killarney Park volunteers. And in another hour or so, we'll be on top of the crack, which provides some of the best panoramic views of the Killarney interior and its quartzite peaks and deep blue lakes. It is sometimes hard to describe what it's like to walk among thousands of trees, maples, oaks, spruce, pine, hemlock, and firs. Because Killarney is situated between merging ecosystems, it is home to a widely diverse community of wildlife. Moose, lynx, and timber wolf, typical of the north, are here, alongside wildlife more common to southern Ontario, such as black bear, fox, raccoon, deer, coyote, beaver, and populations of both year-round and migratory birds. We are privileged to share Killarney with these native animals. Killarney Provincial Park is a magnet for recreational activities. It's a park for all seasons. In the winter, cross-country skiers glide through snow-covered forests and frozen wetlands over 30 kilometers of groomed trails. Others can strap on snowshoes and use the park's hiking trails, portages, and frozen lakes to reach picturesque vantage points in the high country. In the warmer season, crystal clear lakes, sometimes with as much as 28 meters of visibility, offer unique paddling and swimming opportunities. Visitors return year after year to camp in this park. Whether it's pitched in the George Lake campground or at a remote backcountry site, campers can connect with nature. After all, what is more rewarding than listening to the haunting howls of distant wolves or the lonely plaintive cry of the loon while snuggling in your sleeping bag under the stars? On any moonless night, you might see the grandeur of the Milky Way stretching across the sky or witness a rare showing of the northern lights, aurora. Borealis. Killarney Provincial Park is fortunate to be under some of the darkest skies in the province. Through the generous donation of an observatory, park visitors can use the telescope and be treated to close-up views of planets, nebulae, and entire galaxies beyond our own Milky Way. In the 1970s, shortly after becoming a protected space, Killarney Provincial Park's future faced a significant threat, acid rain. Killarney became the focus of world attention because of extensive damage to its water quality and the ecosystems from acid rain. Mining in nearby Sudbury and pollution from the United States was the cause. 
Killarney Lakes were dying. Acid rain was killing the water plants and the fish. The sustainability of the whole environment was in danger. Born of this dilemma and other concerns, a new organization dedicated to protecting and preserving Killarney Provincial Park began. Friends of Killarney Park was created in 1986 to follow in the footsteps of the Group of Seven, who so ardently defended this pristine wilderness and ensure that a strong and healthy park endures. The Friends of Killarney Park, originally formed by a few local cottagers and concerned people from many parts of Ontario, has grown to a membership of over 400. It's governed by a volunteer board of directors and is a registered charitable organization of Canada. The Friends are stewards of the land and support the park's many programs. Members take part in park events all year long. Winter hiking, spring cleanups, maintaining hiking trails, repairing boardwalks, summer concert performances in the amphitheater. The Friends also support scientific research in the park, such as wolf population research and aquatic ecology. From producing the official park map, trail guides, canoe guides, to art shows, to painting excursion led by artists, to canoe raffles, to bike rentals, to managing the outpost store. The Friends are an active group of caring people dedicated to supporting the ecological and wilderness goals of Killarney Provincial Park. The Friends of Killarney Park are, are truly an asset to the park. Doing things like uh, maintaining trails, building boardwalks, building bridges, um, those are all things that contribute to, to helping me manage recreational use with, with protection values. The Friends of Killarney Park are proud of our contributions to the park, but we could not do it without help. Help from many volunteers for their donations of time and energy. It is really up to all of us to be protectors of Killarney. Friends of Killarney Park is following in the footsteps of the Group of Seven to protect and preserve this pristine Canadian wilderness of lakes, trees, mountains and animals. We invite you to join us in this legacy. Your donation of time and money will ensure that Killarney Provincial Park will remain a place of beauty and peace forever. Last night I dreamed I floated on a pristine northern lake. I dug my paddle deep into a clear and pristine wake. And granite stones and mighty pies were laced across the shore. Oh my God, I know this place. I've been here before Visions such as these I've seen They're captured in the breeze That make the waves on which we coast Gaze upon those trees I feel the warmth and paddle on Through sparkling sunlight beams Oh my God, I know this place It is my